We're back. We're live for our weekly Q&A session. Nobody's here yet, but uh, as people will review this, um, excited to uh, get to another round of questions. If you want to submit questions, you can drop them in on Instagram. You can drop them into the comments below on YouTube, and we'll get back to them uh, later. Um, thanks for being here. And uh, we're just going to go through some questions I usually put out. What's up, Mike? Good to see you, man. Are you still on tour with, uh, what is that, Hamilton? Or you, you were doing that, I know, I saw. Are you still doing that? Hope we get to play again soon. Uh, Mike Pilot's a great drummer, if you don't know him. We recorded uh, some videos, that are duet videos, that we have up on YouTube. You can check those out. <clears throat> Hope we get a chance to play again soon. Uh, so we had some people drop some questions for, I posted yesterday. And so we're going to get to them today. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to drop them into the comments below. But otherwise, we're going to go through some of these questions. Uh, some of them are trombone related and some of them are otherwise related. Thanks for being here, Chris. I see you. Um, well, you'll find out in one second, DJ. Um, first question. Very relevant. It's... Uh, audition season for uh, college auditions. Um, the first question comes from Robbie W. Trombone. He says, when hearing an audition where one plays standards, what do you look for? Um, for me, I'm looking to find out what the uh, musical personality is of the person who's auditioning. So to me, uh, I wanna hear the musician that they are. I want to hear their musicianship, meaning how they interpret the melody, how they handle playing with the live band. Um, for me, technical mastery or, you know, flubbing a couple notes is not as important as expressing and being musical and sharing, you know, some kind of musical point of view rather than being so, you know, kind of stuck in thinking that it has to be a certain way. Um, you can tell pretty fast uh, if somebody's just playing a bunch of stuff because they're trying to impress you or think that you need to be impressed in the first place, but um, I'm not a person that needs to be impressed in that way, I would say. And you can feel free to you know, express your musical vision of a tune rather than playing it the way you think it should be played or playing it because you think it should be played a certain way um, on your audition. So that's my advice. Play it uh, as musically as you can, and uh, the results will speak for themselves. We can kind of get a good idea of your musical personality from just a few minutes of you playing. It doesn't have to be fast or slow. It can really be anything. Um, so just be yourself and play as best as you can and be musical. That's that's the way, that's the things I want to hear. And I think many others agree. Some other people might have other thoughts to add, but um, I also want the person to be relaxed and not too worried about what you know, what I think and just play and enjoy playing music. You know, when we do our auditions at UNT, we have a, a live rhythm section that plays along. So, you know, I want them to have a good time playing with the rhythm section and actually try to make music. And that's what I'm looking for. Um, another question from Jonah Portinari. Uh, he says, how to improve slide technique? Well, the, so this is a very trombone specific question, but, um, First of all, you have to have a concept of what you want to sound like um, in order to select a slide technique uh, style that's going to be relevant to the type of uh, music that you're playing. For example, you know, like a Joe Alessi classical style of slide technique has a lot more rigidity to it than if you watch somebody like J.J. Johnson who uses a lot of wrist and fingers in their slide technique. Um, I have a couple of videos on YouTube about slide technique, and if you want to go more into it, I would recommend sending you over there rather than uh, me explaining it here. Um, that It's more detailed on those videos anyway, but the short answer for jazz slide technique is to use fingers and wrist and uh, less, less arm. So we're thinking of all the points of movement being the arm, the elbow, the wrist, and the fingers. We want most of the smallest and least of the biggest. So mostly fingers. Um, more of a throw and a catch kind of thing. If you watch videos of J.J. Johnson, Curtis Fuller, all of you know these people, for me, that are heroes, um, they use wrist and fingers, throw and catch, and they sound super clean, and they sound very um, 
great, <laughs> for lack of a better way to put it. So I think that the idea of doing that throw in the catch is really important and that sometimes the rigidity of your arm can definitely get in the way of swinging. And so sometimes uh, students will come in and I can tell that they've studied classical music a lot because they're very rigid with their slide technique, uh, which is good for a certain type of resonance and a certain type of sound. But if you're trying to play jazz and swing, I definitely think having a little bit more of that throw and catch will enable you to uh, swing a little harder and play the style a little better, have more of a flow to the eighth notes rather than being so kind of choppy. Let's see, some other questions. Feel free to drop in questions down here on the Instagram uh, if you have a question, but I do have some that we've pre-prepared here from Gil Evans Project, Ryan Truesdell. Any articles coming out soon? Uh, yes, we worked on an article for Downbeat Magazine I think in the April issue it should be coming out about improvising with um, context, I guess, for the composition that you're improvising over using um, a tune from one of my new tunes on the new record, Cast of Characters, and uh, going through a solo and talking about how the composition was made and how I used some of those techniques in um, composing, uh, not composing in the moment, improvising, and not uh, just playing whatever random stuff I've been practicing uh, over those tunes. So that's coming out, I think, for the April issue. It's the Brass Woodshed issue for Downbeat Magazine. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Uh, let's see, slide technique, we talked about that. And then here's another question. This is from Pop Filter. I think this is a spam message. Do you need help submitting music? No, I don't. Thank you, though. I do have a, a record label. If you're interested to know more about that, you can go check out. It's outside.in.music, Outside In Music, uh, on Instagram or uh, www.outsideinmusic.com. And uh, it's a company that does artist services in addition to... Uh, releasing records and we're also a media company meaning we try to promote content artists to create content and help them with all that creation and we do social media management and a bunch of other things so if you want to check that out it's uh, at outside in music on insta or go to outside in music.com uh, instagram feel free to drop in some questions uh, if you have any <clears throat> and uh, we'll keep going through this list of questions from the other day. But uh, the next question comes from Miki Yamanaka. She says, how can you keep working so hard? Um, I don't know. I just, I guess that just uh, is in my DNA to just keep on working. I like the feeling of building something and uh, I like to be involved in lots of things and it's just always been who I am and how I am and since I was a kid you know always having bands and projects and writing music and feeling like I wanted to be involved in as many different musical areas as possible and just a whole bunch of different things but um, maybe it's to my detriment to be so uh, involved in so many things and being busy and all the time and stuff like that but to me it's just part of who I am and uh, so I guess that's why I keep working so hard I guess it's also because I just feel like I haven't arrived yet and I'm not sure that I ever have that feeling of arriving or you know reaching the destination so <clears throat> that's probably why what keeps me working and I also play trombone and I think there's a little bit of a not a stigma but we're a little um, self-defeating sometimes and thinking that we're not going to have enough gigs so we got to have other things that we do alongside of having gigs um, so that all of that could probably play play into it but um, let's see what other questions did people submit here uh, talked about slide technique we talked about auditions um, we got a bunch of spam messages. So if you get messages from these accounts, jazz rock underscore music, uh, underscore piano, underscore music, underscore, uh, those people might be spamming you, just FYI. Um, 
Any other questions from the Instagram universe? Otherwise, we're going to wrap it up for today, and we'll be back again uh, sometime next week with another Q&A. But uh, you can always send me a DM or leave a comment on the YouTube video, and um, we'll go from there uh, with any questions. But uh, that's all we got for today, so that was, that was good. Hope everybody has a fantastic weekend, and uh, we'll check back in next week. So thanks for being here live. If you're here live, thanks for watching on YouTube. Uh, if you're on YouTube, subscribe. Uh, we're putting out uh, videos every week, music videos, educational videos, and some of these kind of Q&A videos. So uh, we'll see you around and uh, have a great weekend.